In this presentation, I'm going to touch on the rest of the fundamental concepts of logical theory, beginning with the concept of consistency and its opposite, inconsistency. So I have two statements here. Pat is 36. Pat is Hindu. And in logic, we say that two statements are consistent if it's possible they're both true. Is it possible these two statements are both true? And if you think about it, it's pretty clear that it's certainly possible they're both true. There's no contradiction in them both being true at the same time. So they're considered a pair of consistent statements. Now, are they both true? I don't know. I don't know if they're both true, but that's not relevant. They're consistent because it's possible they're both true. Now, the opposite of consistency is inconsistency. I have two statements here. Jan is 44 years old. Jan is a teenager. Now, in these examples, we're giving the words their ordinary meanings, their normal meanings. And the normal meaning of the word teenager, the ordinary meaning of the word is someone whose age is between 13 and 19 inclusively, from 13 to 19. So given the ordinary meanings of the words, is it possible that these two statements both are true at the same time? That Jan is 44 and Jan is a teenager. And obviously it's not possible they're both true. And so we say in logic that they're inconsistent. Now are they are they uh, both false? I don't know. Are they both true? Well, I know they can't both be true. They're inconsistent. So that's consistency and inconsistency. Now, implication is the th next concept in the list. I have two statements here. I'm labeling this statement P so I can refer to it. And I'm labeling this one Q. P is the statement Joe is 22 years old. Q is the statement, Joe is legally an adult. And we're giving the words their ordinary meanings. And so in the present context, someone's legally an adult if their age is 21 or older. And in logic, we say that a statement P implies a statement Q. If it's not possible that P is true and Q is false. So does this statement, the statement I labeled P, imply the statement I labeled Q? Joe is 22, Joe is legally an adult. Well, is it possible that the P statement is true, but the Q statement at the same time is false? And obviously, it's not possible that this is true, but that's false. And therefore, the P statement implies the Q statement. We say P implies Q. Uh, in this case, P implies Q, but let's reverse it for a moment. Does the Q statement imply the P statement? Suppose Joe is legally an adult, so Joe's age is uh, 21 or older. Does that lead logically imply that Joe is 22 years old? Exactly 22 years old. Obviously, the Q does not imply the P, although the P implies the Q. And so we have consistency and consistency. We have implication. These are among the fundamental concepts of logical theory. Here's a case of, of a P and a Q where the P does not imply the Q. Um, P is the statement, Ned drinks coffee. Q is the statement, Ned drinks rum. And we say that P implies Q if it's not possible that P is true, Q is false. So is it possible that the P statement is true, but the Q statement is false? Is it possible that it's true that Ned drinks coffee, and yet it's false that Ned drinks rum? Well, certainly it's possible. There's no contradiction in the idea that Ned drinks coffee but does not drink rum, and therefore we would say that P does not imply Q in this case. And of course the Q doesn't imply the P either, does it? 
P only implies Q if it's not possible that P is true and Q is false at the same time. The next concept in this list is equivalence. In logic, we say that two statements are equivalent if they imply each other. So I have two statements here. Sue is taller than Anne. Anne is shorter than Sue. And if you analyze it, the first statement implies the second statement because if it's true that Sue is taller than Anne, then it must be true that Anne is shorter than Sue. In other words, it wouldn't be possible that the first is true but the second is false. So the first implies the second. And furthermore, the second implies the first. That is, Anne is shorter than Sue implies that Sue is taller than Anne. It would not be possible that the second one's true but the first one's false. So the first implies the second and the second implies the first. What this amounts to is that there would be no possible circumstances where these two statements differed as to truth and falsity. In any circumstance where one is true, the other is true. In any circumstance where one is false, the other would be false. They will always match as to truth and falsity. And that's what equivalence amounts to. So we, take, we say two statements are equivalent if it's not possible that they differ as to truth and falsity. They imply each other. They will always match in any circumstance as far as truth and falsity are concerned. That's equivalence. Here's an example of two statements that are not equivalent. Suppose I say Chris is six feet tall. And that's one statement. And the second statement is Bob is at least as tall as Chris. Now, um, the statements are not equivalent because they don't imply each other. So you can think about that. As you think through these examples, read the course materials, look at the examples in the course materials, and make sure you understand them, and that helps you grasp these concepts more fully. The final pair of concepts in this list of the fundamental concepts of logic is necessity versus contingency. In everyday life, when we use the word necessary, necessary or necessarily, we mean that something must be so. Necessary means it must be so. But it must be so means the same as it can't be otherwise. And so if something is necessarily so, it must be so, it can't be otherwise. Now, taking that concept and applying it to truth, we get the logical concept of necessary truth. In logic, we say that a statement is necessarily true if it can't be false, if it's not possible that it's false. So look at the examples of necessary truths in your course materials and make sure they make sense to you. Think them through. Uh, one quick example of a necessary truth, a statement that can't even possibly be false, would be this, the statement in Euclidean geometry that every triangle has three sides. That's a statement that's true and it can't possibly be false. So necessary truth amounts to truth in all possible circumstances. That's another way to put the very same idea. A statement is necessarily true if it's true and it can't be false. In other words, it, it's true and it would be true in any possible circumstance. And corresponding to that, we have the concept of necessary falsehood. A statement in logic is said to be necessarily false if it is false and it can't possibly be true. In other words, it's false and it is it would be false in any possible circumstance, true in no possible circumstance. That's a necessary falsehood. For example, the statement that all squares have 12 sides. That's a necessary falsehood, at least if you understand the meaning of the word square uh, as a four-sided figure with four equal sides and four equal angles. It's necessarily false to say there are squares with 12 sides or even all squares have four sides. So look at the examples of necessary falsehoods and see that 
indeed they are statements that can't even possibly be true. They're false in all possible circumstances. Now opposed to necessity is contingency. In logic, we call a statement contingent if it's not necessary. Now contingent in ordinary language means depends upon. Now here's why we call a statement contingent if it's not necessary. If a statement is neither necessarily true nor necessarily false, then that means that since it's not necessarily true, there are circumstances where it would be false. Since it's not necessarily false, there must be some circumstances where it would be true. And so if a statement is neither necessarily true nor necessarily false, then there are circumstances where it's true and there are circumstances where it's false. In other words, in some possible circumstances it's true, in some possible circumstances it's false. So whether the statement is true or false depends on circumstances. And so we call it contingent. It depends on circumstances whether it's true or false. And so that completes our list of all the fundamental concepts of logical theory. And I've written them down here so I can make a few final comments.